Yeah, guys, as for some of the tools that I'm going to use to do this job, which is the uh, brake pads, rotors, 2014 MDX, front brake pads and rotors. I'm going to use a brake spreader, a wire brush, clean off any um, rust, what have you, a hammer. That's, you're going to need that to knock the rotor loose. It's going to be welded tight. It's going to be rust welded tight there. A socket, 17 millimeter, 19 millimeter. I just have another selling 17 millimeter wrench. Definitely a breaker bar. You can use a wire tie or a hanger. This is to um, get the caliper out of the way while you're working on the rotor. And this is an impact gun. I use this to break the, uh, the screw for the rotor. We use this to break it loose with a Phillips head, of course. A regular Phillips. And you don't really need this, but it's always good to have this around. You might have to pry the um, caliper open. That's just a, a large flathead. As for lubricants and cleaners, thread locker, anti seize, silicone paste, and regular brake clean. And you might need an um, oil pan when you're cleaning off the um, stuff. You don't want everything dripping on, um, dripping on the pavement. So you might want to have one of these handy to catch all of the mess. All right, let's get to it. Hey YouTube, what's up? Brooklyn Bionic here. What I'm doing here today is um, I'm gonna attempt your know, full disclosure first. Yo, I'm not a mechanic. I'm not a professional in any kind of way. I'm just a I'm just a YouTube watcher <laughs> who's trying to save some cash, man. I, I saw a couple of these videos and uh, I just feel like it's easy enough for me to tackle myself, so I'm gonna go for it. And besides, you know you. Times are, times are hard on this boulevard, so I'm gonna attack this myself. And um, let's get into it. This is, this is for a 2014 MDX, which is the third generation MDX. And surprisingly enough, I don't see any videos on YouTube explaining how to, speci for this specific vehicle. I mean, I see them for the first generation MDX, second generation MDX, but none for the third. So I might be the first. And this is probably what, this is my second video, so, you know, that's, that's an honor <laughs> to be doing this 2014 MDX first. This is the front, I'm going to do, I'm going to change the brake pads, and I'm going to change the rotors. Well, I'm going to attempt to do that. So let's get into it. Kind of broke these loose already. By the way, this is not a regular drill. This is an impact driver. I think I'm gonna go inside and turn the wheel this way. So I have more access to the beyonds of this brake caliper here. I'm gonna turn the wheel hard left. Definitely a lot better. Perfect. All right. Hope you can see that. All right. The first thing I'm gonna do is um remove these caliper screws, top and bottom. These screws are 17, 17 millimeter screws. And then I'm gonna take the caliper off, take the brake pads out. And after that, I'm gonna remove these. I don't know. This is the knuckle they call it. The, the screws that actually hold the 
caliper bracket onto the car. Two of them, top and bottom. These are 19 millimeter. So um, let's get this cracking. Hopefully it won't be too bad. They, they both look rusted in there pretty good. But I have a breaker bar, so I'm, I'm not really worried about it. This is a 17, let's try the wrench first. See? Not too bad. Just trying to break loose the bottom one. No, I'm going to use the breaker ball for this one. millimeter leverage nice let's get these sockets on a rocket Take the bottom one out first because I don't want the the caliper just overlapping and dangling. Oh, this is tight. Let's see where the screwdriver in here. Bust that open. Uh oh spring came up. Well, I guess this, guess this thing did come all the way out. All right. Okay. Now that the caliper is off, I want you to note the orientation of these brake pads. It's a pad on each side, and you got these springs connected to the pads. I'm not a mechanic, but um, I guess these springs are, you know, the, the calipers they push in like this when the piston hits it and I guess the springs are there to keep the pads off of the rotor when you're not using the brakes I'm assuming so I'm gonna take these springs out save them and now here comes the pallet, uh, pads alright word to note although I said I'm changing the brake pads in, uh, in the heading of this video I'm really not. Look at the meat on these things. I changed these about three months ago, but I need new rotors now. These are the original Honda slash Acura brake pads for this car. So, I mean, if you need those, I'll, I think I'll try to put a link. Not a link. I'll put the part number in the description. These pads are fine. They got a lot of meat on them. I'm not changing them. I'm going to reuse them. I mean, the fact that I'm taking them out and putting them back in, I'm not all the way lying to you about changing the brake pads, you know what I'm saying? But I'm going to keep these and make sure you keep those springs. All right. Okay, as far as this brake caliper, you want to get this as far as out of your way as possible. And you, just, you don't want to let it dangle from this brake line here. You can damage that. So you want to kind of just... Set it away up and safe while you're working. I'm going to try to use this, this piece of wire. It's a wire tie. I don't know what it is. And I'm just going to try to attach it to the spring here so that it's out of my way and safe while I'm working over here. Uh, 
That's good. Don't think it's going anywhere. Wire tied to the spring. I'm just letting that dangle. No tension on this brake line whatsoever. All right. Okay, back to the mat at hand. I'm gonna make an attempt to take these screws out. These are the 19 millimeters and they attach to the knuckle. These really look rusted in, so I'm gonna need to break a bar for that, I'm sure. Thank God for a breaker ball, boy. I'm telling you. Let's do this one next. Nice. Not too bad. Not too bad. Hope you people can see me. I'm assuming you can. Let's get this on the socket. Bottom first. The top. caliper out of the way I'm ready to try to take this rotor off notice that I turned the wheel straight again so I can have a kind of a flat surface to work with um now this wheel is held this this rotor is held on by one screw hopefully I don't have a big problem taking that out this is like the biggest problem on the videos I see but mine don't look too bad so I'm going to try the screwdriver first <laughs> And of course, that's not working. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do, like I said, this this drill is not a regular drill; it's an impact uh, impact drill. So it has like a hammering action to it. This bit seems to fit perfectly, nice and snug. So. it on setting one and try to back it out. I'm gonna push down hard on this. Okay. Not moving, huh? Let's try the second setting. Hopefully. try to do I'm gonna hammer it a little bit Still on the second setting. Maybe that hammering loosed up some of the rust inside. Oh, this is not good. Wow. Need a new bit. <laughs> wow, YouTube, look at that. 
bit actually broke off. It's crazy. All right, I got another bit. Yeah, people, I broke a drill bit. A Phillips head, so I had to go put a new one in. He's always a problem. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. But I really ripped that up. But I have a new one, so it's not going to be a problem. Now, hopefully, this is ready to come out. Of course, this is going to be another problem, of course. I'm going to be banging on this a lot. I think I could have used a bigger hammer for this. This thing is not budging. Must be Ross welded on there. Nope. Oh, I'll keep trying. Yes. Here we go. Some kind of wiggle room. Jesus. Victory. Look at that. It's not even that much rust on this thing. Not as bad of a, as I see. It's crazy. Let's get a front way view of it. It's not even that bad. That's pretty weird. Stuck on here forever. Let me clean this off a little bit. Not really much to clean off, but it's amazing how that thing didn't want to come off. You probably want to use a dust mask when you're doing this. Surface is pretty smooth. I'm just gonna put some anti seize around this whole unit. Okay, that's not as bad as I've seen on YouTube. And this thing was stuck on it. I think that'll do it for that. Okay, YouTube. 
before I put this rotor on, I want to get some of this cleaning action going. I want to spray everywhere. You see this bracket? Well, I'm going to clean out as much of this gunk as possible. And then I'm going to put some brake clean on it. And then wipe it again. Where's my wire brush? Ooh. Now, like I said, I'm not changing my brake pad, so I'm still using this hardware that's already in there. All I'm doing is cleaning it up while I have it out. I think that's good enough. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just get all the gunk out of there. That's fine. Now, you might be tempted to just spray brake clean on these things, but I think the brake clean is not good for these um these rubber boots here. So I'm gonna I'm not gonna spray the whole thing with brake clean. And another thing here, you see these guide pins? They say these are supposed to be nice and loose. Mine is pretty loose. And if they're not loose, you actually have to. I don't have to. I don't think I. Do, but since I got these out. I'm gonna pull these out here. Pull the boot back and just pop these out. And although mine looks pretty good, I'm gonna clean it off and put new silicone on it. I'm gonna put this stuff on it. Let me show you. The silicone paste. They say you're not supposed to use brake grease on these things because the brake grease also dries out that little boot. And this is just better. So this is what I'm going to use on it. I'm going to wipe this off, gunk it up with this, and then stick it right back in there. Clean enough. Get a nice amount on there. Make it sloppy. Boom to the bam. Bam to the boom. Good to go. I don't know if these things are different size, top and bottom, so I'm just going to do them one at a time so I don't make any mistakes. I'm going to leave that one in there while I'm doing this one. The inside looks pretty clean. Just gonna stick this in there. Let's get down. With a good rub. Make sure this boot is on correctly. There it is. Maybe wipe off some of this silicone. And that's good. Nice and slippery. Now, you take this to a mechanic. I don't think a mechanic, well, not most mechanics. You tell them to change your brake pads or whatever, or rotor. This is not going to get done. <laughs> Unless you tell them to do it or, or you're standing by watching them or something. Usually they don't do this, man. This is, this is, this is extra shit. I used to do the second one. Pop this boot back. Pull it out. Swipe this off. It's like some good preventative maintenance, man. I guess these things, after a while, they seize up. But if you do this every time you change your brake pads or rotors, I mean, the car do a lot, a whole lot better with it. That's why I want to learn this stuff for myself, man. I, I just don't trust all of these mechanics. No disrespect to all the mechanics. Some of the mechanics. 
Brake job. Yeah. Gunk it up real nice. I don't know if I'm putting too much on here, but silicone paste. Too much can be bad, huh? Gonna pop this inside. Oh, it's nice and gooey. Clean off that excess that pops out. Pop it in, get that boot there. See how the boot just pops right on top? Have to make sure that that boot seats. Yeah. And we're good to go on that. Now the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna lubricate this here. This is where the brake pads move in and out. This is where it makes contact with this, on this hardware here. So you know what I'm gonna use for that? I'm gonna use some of this uh, anti-seize, this copper anti-seize. I'm just gonna put a dab where the brake pads sit. Right here. On both sides, front and back. Top and bottom. Need some more of that. You could put some on the brake pads themselves too, but I'm not going to go overboard. I think that's enough. Good to go. Now let's attack this uh, piston, the caliper itself. Take this down. You know what? We'll leave that for last. Let's get this brake port, this brake road on. I'm not ready for that yet. Yeah, we're not ready for that yet. Brake order time. Oh no! One more thing. One more thing here. And it sees. I mean, you guys saw what happened earlier. You saw how hard it was to take that, that rotor off. Just, just lube it up. I'm gonna use the same and sees on this plate where the rotor sits. This way, years down the line when I'm ready to do this again, maybe it won't be so hard. I'm just gonna put it everywhere. Why not? Why not, you know? Juice it up, lube it up. I think that's good enough. Did I miss a spot? No problem. You guys let me know if I'm doing something wrong here. I got tough skin. You can kill me in the comments if you want. Like I said, I'm new to this. Saw a couple of videos on YouTube. I feel like I can do it. And so far, not so bad. This is easy, man. I've been wasting my money bringing my car to these mechanics and letting them do this, man. A brake job can go for what? 120 bucks. That's just for the, the labor to do the front and back sometimes $120 each front and back so 
I mean, I like saving money, of course, but I like learning, sh learning shit too. So, all right, let's get this rotor on here. Okay, this is the old brake pad, brake sorry, brake rotor, and this is the new one I'm gonna be using. It's a Ray Bestus, Ray Bestus. That's the part number there. 91063. This is for the front 2014 Acura MDX. Let me set this down a little bit so you can get a better view here. Good enough. Okay, that's old versus new. Make sure you, um, <laughs> I should have done this before I took the uh, rotor off, but you want to take the new one out and compare it to the old one to make sure it's the right one before you take the rotor off. That was my mistake. But I'm pretty sure this is the right rotor for my car, so I'm not really concerned about that. Um, they say you're supposed to wipe this off. A little brake clean because when they ship these things it's like it's supposed to be a solution on it to keep it from rusting and you don't want to put it on with that solution you don't want to put it on your car with that solution on it it's not good for the brake pads so you want to spray this down with some brake clean both sides and then wipe it down for this particular road I think there's a special I don't know if you can see it there's a special paint on this it's supposed to be some kind of rust prevention Rust prevention. So I don't think they put that solution on this one, but I'm gonna wipe it down anyway, just in case. I got some regular brake clean. wipe down inside of the hat just make sure you get the surface of the rotor good enough for me at least all right let's get this onto the car all right this rotor on make note the hole for that screw to hold the rotor on make sure you know where it's at before you put the rotor on it's in here and the screw hole is here make sure you, make sure you push that rotor all the way on there See how it seats? Oh. Okay. Remember I told you I chewed out the head of that screw, the rotor screw? This is the Honda part number. I don't know if you can see it. I'll leave it in the description anyway, this part number here. This is a new screw. Here we go. Nice and new. And guess what? You know what I'm going to do? You know what I'm going to do with this? And he sees. You saw the problem I had getting this off. You saw that. It's going to put a little tip. Good enough. Good enough. There's my screwdriver. And I'm just going to plop this in there.
course, when you're putting it back in there, you can just use a screwdriver. You don't need to drill anything. Hand tight is good. Nice new screw with anti seize inside. This seems to be on good. Perfect. and stuff. I'll give that another clean before I put the um, the caliper system back on it or after. All right, what are we doing now? Caliper. Okay, before I put the caliper bracket on, I want to deal with this piston a little bit. I mean, this caliper. Uh, although I'm tempted to clean this thing off with brake clean, they say the brake clean is not good for these things, these, these, these rubber boots inside the pistons. It'll dry it right out. So I'm just gonna run a run a towel over it. I'm not gonna do much to it. I'm just gonna leave that alone. And um, you see these pistons? They're not out a lot. I don't know if you can tell. Oh, maybe like a quarter inch but I want as much space inside this caliper as possible when I'm putting this over the uh, brake pads and everything that could be a hassle so I'm gonna push these in I'm gonna use one of these brake spreaders or brake compression tool whatever you call it these things are cheap you can get them for five dollars on Amazon or something I'm gonna use one of my brake pads In the center of the back against the pistons. Then since it's two pistons, I'm gonna have to go left and right. It's not gonna work if you um try to do it all at once. So I'm just pushing these in a little bit. I can feel I can feel the piston going in already. I'm not gonna do that one tight yet. Go to this side. You want to do it kind of even, as even as possible at least. Let's see how good we are. Yeah, that's good enough. See the difference? I don't know if you can tell, but they're flush with this now. So now I have all the space possible put this over the brake pads if this is too tight it'll be a problem always try to push the piston back before you do that all right now we're gonna you know what I'm gonna have to hang this back up here to do the caliper bracket first My trusty wire tie. These things come in handy. I never used them before. Maybe to wrap up a couple of cords. But this is its true calling. It's perfect. I love it. I mean, I'm not going to do brake pads every so often. I don't drive this car that much, man. I drive it. I, 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 I put on maybe eight or 9,000 miles every, every year. So I don't drive much. I'm assuming these, these rotors and pads should last me at least another four years. So I don't think I'll be back here for another four years unless something, I don't know. That's just a guesstimate. All right. Let's put this bracket back on now. I think I'm going to turn the wheel back this way so I can have space to um, maneuver and space for you guys to see what's going on and everything. Hope you can see that folks. All right, first thing I'm gonna do is put the caliper bracket back on. Remember those were the 19 millimeter screws. Some extra I'm gonna do here. Where is it? Where is it? A lot of people say these, I don't know how, but they say 
these screws like to they in a this 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 vibrates a lot and there's a possibility that these can back out. <laughs> I don't know how because it's always rusted to it. And it's always a problem taking them off. But like I said, I'm gonna go the extra mile and I'm put some of this thread locker on there. This is a medium strength thread locker. Just a little dab. Down the shaft. That's all I need. Move this up a little bit. Right. Okay. Now this is gonna go on like so. And I believe it's 19 inch. Get it in there. That one is in. Bottom. Okay, that one just caught. Screwing as much as we can with our hands. Okay. I need new gloves. good so now we get our socket 19 inch sockets put it on Titan I, this is another disclosure listen I know these are supposed all of these these four screws this one this one and the 17 millimeter is supposed to be torqued down to a certain spec spec I have a torque wrench <laughs> I'll be right here. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah. These screws are all supposed to be torqued down to a specific foot-pound rating. I have a torque wrench, but I don't have those ratings right now. For some reason, I don't know if Acura's being stingy. I've been trying to get my hands on the service manual for the third-generation Acura. It's very... Yeah, I don't see it anywhere. So I don't have the torque specs on this, what I'm supposed to do. I mean, I guess if I did an in-depth research, I could find it, but for now I don't have it. So you guys work with me. Yeah, you're free to tear me apart in the comments if you want. I gotta work with what I got. I'm just gonna tighten this until snug. That should be good enough. Nice and snug. Right? Perfect. All right, now that the caliper's on, next step is to put these brake pads in. Side. There's my other brake pad. There we go. This is gonna go on this side. You see? That's what I'm talking about. You see how it makes contact with this? I'm gonna keep that well lubricated. That's how the brake pads they slide back and forth. Alright, we're gonna put the top in first, maybe. There we go. Nice and neat. Next part, we're gonna put our springs back. These can be tricky, you gotta be careful with these. Ah, uh, I knew that was gonna happen. Oh, you son of a... Let's get that. Let's get this back in here first. Just trying to put the 
bottom in first. Yeah, these things can be tricky, you gotta be careful. You see? It wants to pop right back out. It wants to pop right back out. This is not, you see the way these are popping out when you put the spring in? This is another reason you need the caliper to be have the most space possible. So it's always good to compress those pistons. I'm gonna close this. Please don't come back out. I'm gonna put this in here. Put this in here. Okay, I'm gonna give you a little space to work. Don't come out. Ah, you son of a... Come on, work with me. Jesus. It's always tricky, eh, but patience. Patience. Come on, work with me. I'll give you space to breathe. Yeah, hey, I'll give you space to breathe. Ah, that's popped out again. Popped out again. Let's see, I wish I had five hands here. You hear that music? That's right, we in Brooklyn, man. That's where we at. That's how it is. I really need my two hands to uh, I'm trying to give the space to breathe without coming out. Perfect. That's great. That's great. Don't move. Don't move. Get this caliber. I'll be right with you. You don't have to act like that. Brake springs. Okay. Okay. Okay, so now I want to compress. All right, I'm gonna compress these brakes together now. Hopefully the spring doesn't come out. And just fit them right over. Nice. Now you can't really go anywhere, can you? Uh oh. Now you can't really go anywhere, can you, buddy? Right. I think I'm good. I think I'm good. Maybe. Okay, to you too. Um, you gotta note this. When you're putting this on, right? You see these guide pins here? They're gonna keep turning, but it has a rounded, rounded end, and then it has two flat surfaces on the side. You have to make sure the flat section matches up with the flat section of the um, the caliper. Or when you put the screw in this thing, it just keep turning. I don't know if I can show you there. There's a flat section over here and a flat section here. You have to match them up so that this doesn't turn when you're ready to put the bolts in and tighten it down. You have to do it for the top and the bottom. That was a learning curve for me just now. So make sure you do that. All right, we're ready to put our screws in. All right. I'm assuming you guys can see that. I'm telling you, this camera placement is hard. But yeah, I'm using my um, S7 to record this. No special cameras. All I have is one of those little cheap Amazon tripods. And um, I'm just sticking it, you know, it's, I hope it works out. All right, what are we looking for here? Seven millimeter, seven millimeter screws to go here. Yeah, make sure these things are tight. I'm gonna put some Loctite on this too. Maybe it doesn't need it, I don't know, but 
I guess a little bit won't hurt. Uh, I got too much on that one. No problem. Just enough on that one. Okay. Let me get my wrench ready. 17 millimeter. Set the screws up. Let's put the bottom in. This to be good enough. Set the wrench on tighten. Just hit the top a little bit. Just hit the bottom a little bit. Okay, that's a little snug. Snug the top. Okay, snug. Good enough. Snug. What would that be? Snug. Good enough. We're good to go. Was that brake line like that? All right. We don't know. Looks good. Okay, to YouTube. I think I'm finished here. I think I'm finished. Bang to the boom. Um. Yeah. It looks good. I know if it's gonna work good. I guess all it is now is to um go in the car and pump the brakes until they get nice and tight. We don't want it spongy. So that's what I'm gonna do. And then I'm gonna put the wheel on. And then I'm gonna go to the next side. Of course it's the same thing on the next side, so you don't have to wait for that. I'm gonna go in the car and pump the brakes. I'll let you. <laughs> I don't know what you're gonna see, but I'll let you look. I'll let you look. <laughs> oh, give me a sec. Feels good. Feels extra nice. I'm just gonna wipe off this rotor, put the wheel on, proceed to the next side. Thanks for watching YouTube. Like I said, um, if I did something wrong here, or you know, just let me know how you feel. If I did something good here, let me know how you feel. Either way, keep the comments coming. Appreciate it. Brooklyn Bionic.